Hi, today I want to talk to you about a Train XL16 Type Series uh, compressor. Uh, you're probably watching this because you want to understand how to replace uh, the capacitors that are in it. Uh, this model actually has two capacitors, one for running and one for starting. First thing you need to do is to understand that you need to make it safe. Uh, see the panel on the left? That is a fuse box. We'll pull the sucker out. See? Set it to the side. The parts we're using are actually off the shelf. I'm actually replacing it with a compatible part for one of the capacitors. I got this off of a, a fix it site. It's easy to get. Here's a close up of what it looks like. Pretty basic. Here's a picture of the other one. This is the one we're replacing. Uh, this, this is a compatible one. What you want to make sure is uh, the voltage. Uh, this one says it's up for 440 uh, VAC and uh, 40 microfarads. And that, th those are the important numbers. You need to make sure those are the same. And look at how this stuff looks. Now, you probably see a green light flashing in here. That's actually being powered from the thermostat upstairs. So you're actually okay. At least I think so. Um, next thing you want to do is you want to short these things out. Like right here. Make sure you cross it real good. Come up here. Cross this real good. Because you really don't want to get shocked by these things. So it'll ruin your day. Now these are actually 5 sixteenths as well. The key is just to keep these separate. Because you, you, uh, where those go does matter. I match up the microfarad rating on this. And this thing says 40 microfarads and 440 volts AC. This one happens to be a General Electric one. and This one's actually bad. There's other videos out there on how to tell you if it's bad or not. Anyway, that, that matches this. I want to show you how put it in. This new clamp goes around the new unit. I kind of just uh, want to get the screw started on there. Uh, so I decided to get the, the left one in first because that was probably going to be a tougher one to get in. Come in here. And the two oranges and the red one. That's where it takes a little bit of persuasion. Not very scientific. I'm not tightening them down to a specific torque or anything, but it's not moving and the screws are fine. Up for the big one, if you notice, another check is they look the same. So for this one, I'm kind of paying more attention to the wires, which side goes to which. It's all nice and tight. And all you have to do is put it back together, plug your fuse in, and you're done. This ball has a little like channels in it. On the end, you want to get those lined up. Oh, and in the slot. Sometimes they don't go in right. What you do is get yourself a spike done like this. This is a uh, probably Torx head. You can find a hole and get in. Now, the most important part: put the fuse back in. It's actually an on and an off for this. You want it to be on. You want it to be up. Make sure you're working on this. Put this down, otherwise you can hit your head. That hurts. <laughs> and I'm done. Now you can see the tops of these. This is what really happened. So on the other uh, uh, unit, this thing had completely rusted off, and this was a bad one. On this unit, you can see how it's kind of uh, bulging at the top there. So uh, it turns out this one's dead. If you look at the uh, uh, videos on how to find out that they measure between these, and you can get a microfarad rating between them, and this one fails, it's actually zero. It's not doing anything. I think this is the run one. This is a start one, or it could have them backwards. But you can look that up. So, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.